Hey folks, this is Tony Day. Today I'm going to be going over this Sony A7S III, the spec list, and just kind of giving my thoughts on it. Um, so uh, yeah, let's let's look at this. Uh, so a lot of people have been waiting for this camera for a while, and um, for you know, they Sony's spent quite a while uh, kind of building this thing, and um, it's it's really a camera made more for video creators than it is for still photography, and that doesn't mean that you can't use it for still photography, and I'll get into that later, but um, I just wanted to kind of explain that um, this is definitely more for video creators than it is for photo. Uh, okay, for visual trailblazers. Um, it's just for, it's just a tool for creating video. Extreme full frame movie performance. What do they mean by extreme? Like I know what extreme weather means, but what does that mean? Full frame movie performance. So I just wanted to say this real quick. Full frame is a marketing term. Um, this is, uh, uh, for video creators, uh, 135 large format. These are just different formats. Uh, super 35 is the standard. Um, you know, large formats, larger. So, you know, if you, if, uh, just, just real quick off the top, if you think that having larger format is going to make your movies that you shoot with these kinds of things any better, um, they're just going to look different, not necessarily better. Okay. Including high sensitivity, expanded ISO up to 409,600. Um, you know, I know that these are usually really good for high ISO, but you know, with stuff like this, these numbers um, really only matter if the picture quality looks good at those numbers. So um, just uh, when you get the camera, uh, just test it out, okay? And find out what the actual limitations that you have. Because everybody's uh, opinions about noise, for example, are going to be different on what their threshold is, okay? So just do that yourself um, to find out what your threshold is. 15 stop wide dynamic range. Um, that's what they tested. So, we, you know, I'll, we'll just go with that. 4K 120p. There's a little thing here with a 10% image crop. I believe this does up to 60p and 4K with no crop, which is excellent. And this 120p is, I mean, that's a really tiny crop right there for 120p. So uh, good on them for doing that. Uh, fast and dependable autofocusing. That will be, depend on uh, a couple things, which I'll talk about. Uh, extra strong image stabilization. I don't know what extra strong means. Um, so maybe they just mean it's better. Uh, the A7S III, right? Uh, this is more marketing stuff. Um, this is the big thing to me, 422, 10 bit, all intra. That's excellent. ISO range is going from 40 to, you know, huge number here. Uh, I'm going to ignore that. Um, they're going to ignore these things. Okay. Uh, so here it says, um, new 12.1 megapixel. Uh, what's this? Approximate effective. Okay. Um, so it's basically a 12 megapixel camera. Um, I, I have heard that, uh, some people were saying that, that this is not enough for photography. It really is. Um, it just depends on what you're doing with it. This is going to be more than enough for web use, uh, creating images for thumbnails and that kind of thing. I mean, clearly if you were trying to do sports photography or, uh, I know that some people were saying that, uh, how are you supposed to use this camera for bird photography? Well, obviously this is not a bird photography camera. Obviously it's not a bird photography camera. So that's not even, I mean, if you're looking to buy this to shoot birds, you're looking in the wrong place. Okay. So, you know, clearly if you're doing photography as like your main thing and you're doing prints and all that, um, then you might want to get a, a photography dedicated camera, not this. Okay. But for, you know, shooting images for thumbnails for your videos or shooting for web uh, delivery, which is the largest way uh, and the most common way to deliver images today, Instagram or whatever, this is more than enough. Um, I mean, people make a living uh, shooting images with their cell phones. Okay, so this, this should be fine. Blazing doubled readout speeds. I'm assuming that this, it doesn't say what they're, what they're comparing to, this doubled thing. But I'm assuming that this is just in the last uh, version of it, um, either of the sensor or uh, of the A7S II. So here is the more important thing about it is the reduced rolling shutter. So having less megapixels should help with the rolling shutter, which is really important. I have seen it tested where this rolling shutter is uh, uh, much better than previous iterations. 
which is really important because in, in my view, this is a great uh, camera for shooting handheld video. And you want as uh, little rolling shutter artifacts as possible when you're shooting that kind of video. Stunning autofocus performance even at 4K 120p. Let's see what that thing says with, yeah, okay. So with this autofocus performance, my understanding is that there are quite a few cameras that will have like high frame rate but not allow autofocus or they will have like a reduced performance in autofocus. So um, if they were able to in 120p have the same or similar uh, performance as at say 24p, 60p, that kind of thing, then that is very impressive. So good on them if they were able to do that. Here's a big thing that I was looking for in this, this next iteration was the 10-bit 422. And I'm actually a bit surprised that they did it because they had such a problem with overheating uh, in previous cameras, even just doing 8-bit, that I, I was just surprised that they, they did it. And I'm pretty sure that the research uh, that it took to to build this was why it took a while. They wanted to make sure that they could deliver what was needed without the overheating problem. So, you know, now they've got 10-bit 422 um, and they've got an all intro encoding. So this is really important for uh, a lot of deliverables. It, it depends on who you're delivering to, but um, this for, for in, in my history, was the lowest uh, quality that you could accept was uh, an all intra 10-bit 422 uh, recording. Uh, long GOP was not acceptable so this all intro encoding should be really helpful. Uh, it helps the decoders when you're doing editing and stuff like that in post um, to be less taxing on your machine. So that all intro is really nice. Uh, it says um, every frame independently at bit rates up to 600 megabits per second. So you're gonna have to make sure that uh, your cards are gonna be fast enough for this. So just to show you something here, this is 600 megabits per second. If we divide by eight, that's 75 megabytes per second. So you need to make sure that whatever uh, cards you get, uh, this camera uses UHS-2 cards or CF Express cards, um, they need to be able to uh, sustain at least uh, 75 megabit megabytes per second or higher, okay? Which means that a V60 card, um, they usually, by that V60 rating, are only guaranteeing 60 megabytes per second um, at the lowest uh, possible rate, meaning it will never drop below 60. Now, some can be tested to be higher than that, but just keep that in mind when you buy cards, probably the safer bet is a V90, okay? Just, that's my recommendation, just off of reading this, okay? Our renowned sensitivity delivers expanded ISO 409,600. So again, this number, is only going to be relevant to you if this meets your threshold. If you think this is clean enough and and all that, and the image looks fine, then this will make sense. But usually it's lower than this. Okay, usually this super super high ISO is like emergency kind of stuff. What I will say about this though is that if the A7S III is an upgrade from the previous version, these cameras tend to be really really good for those situations where you can't really bring in any lights. So if you're shooting stuff like weddings or events, for example, and you need to get some uh, video uh, throughout and you're not sure how dark it's gonna be um, or if you're gonna have any way of bringing in any, any lights, if that's just not an option, then having this uh, high ISO capability is gonna be really, really nice for you um, to you know get good quality in low light you know i haven't used a camera but if if from what i'm seeing and from what i understand about just this line of cameras in general is that even if it's a, a little bit to a moderate bit better than the previous version this will be a really nice uh, event uh kind of video camera uh slog and hlg any of this stuff like you're gonna have to shoot it and find what profiles work best for you that's that's really it uh, i know that originally when people got some of these Sony cameras they were shooting in slog, find out that, you know, other profiles were a lot better for their purposes. So, um, you know, definitely do testing, figure out how to grade everything um, to get the best that you can out of it uh, and find out what works best for you. Uh, I don't really have a whole lot to say about this. Just, you know, find out what's going to work best for you. 16-bit raw HDMI output. So with this, um, yeah, you can output it, but, you know, you're going to need to get a device that can record it. And from my understanding, Atomos has some devices that can do this right now, um, but they are recording in ProRes RAW, which is not supported, uh, to my knowledge, by DaVinci Resolve. So if you're doing grading in there, you're going to have to use a different program until 
resolve kind of uh, start supporting ProRes RAW. So uh, you can also do like ProRes 10-bit and 12-bit, from my understanding. Um, the thing is that if I was getting this camera, I would not be using a setup like this. I, I would probably just want the body and the lens because I think this camera is more meant for that kind of thing. And this, uh, uh, the 10-bit 422 all-intra codec should be good enough for the kind of productions I would expect this camera's design for. Um, yes, having this kind of capability is really nice. I mean, I, I understand that, but just this is my personal opinion. I think this would be really great for taking out and, you know, uh, just having it as bare bones as possible. I see this this proxy thing, and I probably wouldn't do it, uh, to be honest. But, um, you know, maybe there's other people who need proxies, and I don't. It says powerful focus control. It just, they basically added a few more levels uh, to it, which is, which is fine. And they have, um, you know, rack focusing kinds of features and stuff like that that you can do, which is, which is nice. Um, what I have seen is that what they've done is they've added some uh, easing with their uh, focus control, which is really, really nice uh, to have. If you didn't already know, there's in-body stabilization. Uh, when they say uh, the, this is this is uh, highly accurate uh, and all that stuff, it really, like, you're going to have to try it out to see if it works for you. I've seen some tests of it um, where the image stabilization, uh, depending on the situation, looked fine or it didn't look fine. So it, you'll have to just use it. But yeah, I want to get to he here. So... Um, this thing looks really awesome, uh, this audio interface. So I, I just think this is this would be a really great news gathering camera because it's very low profile. You can take it um, to a number of different events where uh, you'll be less conspicuous and you can kind of do interviews quickly without having a huge crew with you. And this just seems really cool to me. Um, and there's a huge market for this kind of uh, uh, work also for this low profile kind of news gathering. So I think this would be a great camera for that. I know that people are using the the uh, other Sonys for it. And I think this would be just a step up from that. Um, here they talk about the heat dissipation. Um, so this is probably what they put a lot of work into, I'm thinking, to make sure that they weren't going to have the overheating problems that they'd had in previous models of their cameras. Uh, not this particular one, but in, in other cameras that they released. And I think that this is uh, really going to be the uh, the technology that really helps us out. Uh, Canon um, is having a problem right now because they have some cameras that they release that do have overheating when they're recording. So um, this should hopefully deal with it in the Sony, which would be awesome. Yeah, it says uh, you get UHS-2 cards and CF Express. So this is great. Um, not sure why you would need the CF Express right now, but I would like to see more of this in the future from every other manufacturer because these CF Express ones should be faster. Like I think we should have the uh, opportunity to use either this UHS-2 or CF Express. And if they were able to figure it out for this camera, um, I would really like to see more of this kind of innovation to allow us to use multiple different card types like this in the future, um, especially with video considering that, uh, you know, there's some companies coming out with 8K, 12K cameras that are in smaller bodies. We really need fast media for this to work uh, and be dependable. It also has a tilty flippy screen, which is uh, very fine for many people. I've never found much of a use for this kind of thing, but I know other people have. And it has a very, very fine looking uh, uh, viewfinder in there. So I'm this this looks like it would be really nice. I'd like I'd like more of these to be <laughs> kind of a standard. Um, and then there's a bunch of other things. Uh, menu structure, um, if it's better, good. Um, the best uh, menu system I've used so far is the Blackmagic Design touchscreen interface. Uh, it's the best in the business, in my opinion. So uh, there's that. And a bunch of other things. So um, here's my feeling on this. This camera looks like basically the GH5, but they put a larger sensor on it. And it's a Sony brand, um, and it has way better autofocus. That's really what it looks like to me. There's a lot of other things in it, but if you're familiar with the GH5 and how important that was in this small kind of camera market for video production, you'll understand what I mean, especially the codec of having a 10-bit all intra like this. This is, for me, what I would need to feel okay with using a camera like this. 8-bit is just not enough information for me. Um, but this is this should be really good for a lot of productions and I'm talking about like weddings I'm talking about events. I'm talking about travel if you like to make little videos of your hikes If you're doing a lot of corporate kind of videos, this should be really nice 
And another thing I, I forgot to mention, the battery life on this thing is supposed to be really nice, like a two hour battery life shooting 4K 60p, which is really, really great. So um, this, this camera to me, if you are creating a uh, SLR style camera or mirrorless camera, and you're trying to sell it to a video creator's market, you need to use this as your benchmark. Okay, these, these features, this kind of codec, um, the autofocus capability, these are the kinds of things that we need in this, uh, that particular market in order to be a viable um, piece of gear for it. I know that some people on my channel have asked me about you know, the Pocket 4K in relation to this. If you think that the A7S III and the Pocket 4K or 6K are really comparable, I just don't think they are. Um, they are different tools for different things. This one I think is really good for lower end productions where you need to have a lot of conveniences like autofocus, uh, the stabilization, you need to have um, the low light uh, ISO capabilities and all those things. For the pocket cams, uh, you know, you expect to rig those things out with more stuff. You have internal RAW um, and a bunch of other things that uh, are for, I, I think, more narrative productions. Uh, or if you're like me and you love shooting with Blackmagic RAW and you're not really interested in giving that up, then obviously, you know, this camera is not going to have that. It will have ProRes RAW, but it's not the same thing. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this. Um, uh, let me know what you think below, and I will catch you later. Mm -hmm.